Hopefully this is going to be the last time I have to show you why these acclaimed and accredited physicists are admitting what they're admitting now. Now normally they were never, you know, put in front of people who would ask these type of questions because they would instantly believe, memorize, and regurgitate every word verbatim that they heard. But now millions and billions of people are asking questions that are putting these individuals, these physicists, on the spot. Okay, it has become highly apparent that if a force, power, thing, or energy is going to influence other matter, it can only do so by physical contact. It must engage, engulf, or interact with that physical matter in a physical form of direct contact. There's no other way for it to occur unless there's some sort of magic or supernatural action going on. Now, for you to influence, govern, or move physical matter, you must exert physical force to move it left, right, up, down, or sideways. You have to have physical contact with that matter. For me to do something to the screen, I have to physically use my finger to make contact with the screen to push it back or forth. Do you get my meaning? So we're going to listen to Eric Verland, acclaimed and accredited physicist, sweat bullets, take large gulps of air, and uh, appear very uncomfortable as he is actually very honest when he explains why gravity is an illusion, so on and so forth. And again, don't get mad at me. I'm not the one who initially said these things, he says it. I just put it together in a logical manner to interpret our reality. So let's take a listen to this acclaimed physicist tell you the truth, finally. What I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually like to know where it comes from, an explanation. Uh, up to now we have, uh, well, descriptions, I mean, Newton. Okay, for one, I'm not going to keep interrupting, but he just said gravity is an illusion. And all we have now are descriptions. Do you understand what a description is? Someone saying a rock falling is gravity. is not really gravity. It's a description of what you claim or think or believe gravity is causing behind the scenes. Okay, are we clear on that? That is a description. It is not gravity itself. When you say a rock falls, that's just a rock falling. Apparently, because the rock is denser than its surrounding air, it falls through the air. But of course, you've been trained to think, why is it falling down in the first place? Well, it's returning to where it originated from. Everything on the earth came from the earth. Now we converted into other things, forks, napkins, tables, cars, headlights. It all comes from the earth. Now I won't interrupt again, but I want you to understand what a description is. It's circumstantial. It's not direct evidence. Direct evidence is gravity itself. Whatever presence, substance, form, or physicality it takes. But whatever it is itself, it has to make physical contact with the matter it wishes to govern or direct somewhere. What I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually like to know where it comes from, an explanation. Uh, up to now we have, uh, well... Descriptions. I mean, Newton, of course, is uh, the one famous for, for first writing down a theory of gravity. And uh, he could describe why apples fall and, and why the moon goes around the Earth using the same 
a basic equation for gravity, but um, he described it. Uh, he had to assume that gravity was there. Described and assumed. Remember those words and understand what they mean. And um, then, then had to write down a, a law that described that when two masses are at a certain distance, how they attract each other. But he was also not very happy with the fact that he mm. should just well, assume that these things, uh, these objects, uh, attract each other and without even anything in between. So, it, so what he's saying, without anything in between, meaning to wit, i.e., there is no physical contact of any present substance, form, or physicality of this gravity interacting or engaging or making physical contact with the matter itself. It's just these descriptions and these laws they write down. Now, I won't, I'll try not to interrupt again, but I don't want some of the things he's saying to go over your head because you've been programmed to let that happen, to not face reality. And um, then, then had to write down a, a law that described that when two masses are at a certain distance, how they attract each other. But he was also not very happy with the fact that he should just well, assume that these things, uh, these <laughs> objects, uh, attract each other and without even anything in between. So if there are two masses in empty space, there's no uh, nothing that, that really happens between them, but still they're, they're attracting each other. And he thought that was kind of uh, mysterious and, and that it was <laughs> something he would have liked to explain in a better way. So later came Einstein and I... And we'll get to Einstein because your model no longer classifies or defines gravity as a force. So Newton is pushed to the back of the room, or what we say in the street, kicked to the curb. Because now they're going with Einstein in his conceptual fabric, his medium of space-time, where space and time merge and become a fabric that the alleged mass, size, density, whatever weight of the Earth in outer space surrounded by the fabric of space-time, the Earth is curving it. And that curving space-time is directing matter in a curved trajectory back towards the center of the Earth. Now, I'll let him continue on a little more and then we'll debunk space-time, too. Uh, ...with his uh, theory of relativity, eventually uh, realized that also gravity has to be described in a different way. Yeah, I'll see. quite some years, but then eventually he wrote down a theory... Another theory. ...where um, he thought about space and time together, mm -hmm. and then his explanation of what gravity would be is that uh, uh, there's masses uh, which curve... Um, space and time and then the motion of planets and of the earth around the moon or the moon around the earth uh, is, is then described by um, thinking about moving in this curved space time and how then objects are, are uh, well making their their orbits and the reason they go around then in circles is that um, that space and time itself is curved in the sense that things don't move in straight lines anymore they they, they go around so that was it now, what he means is that the alleged mass of the Earth is curving its surrounding space-time, which they like to depict with a bowling ball as the Earth and a trampoline as the fabric of space-time. They put the bowling ball on <coughs> the uh, trampoline, and the bowling ball curves the trampoline. So they use that to illustrate the fabric of space-time being curved. Orbits, and the reason they go around then in circles is that um, that space and time itself is curved in the sense that things don't move in straight lines anymore. They they, they go around. So that was his explanation, but he had to write down an uh, equation for it, uh, which again assumed that gravity is there because he mm -hmm. basically wrote down more assumption. That, uh, matter uh, curves. Uh, space-time. Um, 
So in a certain way, that's still uh, the description, description, or you, what I should say is, well, one would like to understand again why uh, this description sort of... Uh, so in effect, both Newton and Einstein are using assumption and description to describe something that these individuals cannot directly detect itself. They cannot put forth one iota of presence, substance, form, or physicality of gravity itself having any sway pull on matter to pull it down or to curve it down towards the center of the earth. Why is that so hard to understand? What is going on here with this individual and many other physicists who are admitting the truth is they are now getting ready to change your reality and usher in a new paradigm where Newton and Einstein are discarded. They are discarding Einstein right now. That's why it's so easy for me to show you how hilarious and fallacious it all is. They're admitting what I've been trying to tell you. There is no gravity itself per Newton, his assumptions, or Einstein. So what you need to prepare for is to get ready to instantly believe, memorize, and regurgitate some new nonsense that this guy's trying to put together to become the new Einstein or to supersede Einstein who superseded Newton. So, space-time is doomed. There is no such thing as space-time fundamentally in the laws of physics. The laws of physics are laws of the physical. These things can be physically demonstrated and repeated. Your model is based entirely on theoretical physics. Theoretical physics of Newton and Einstein that can't be demonstrated but exist and go on in an infinite and expanding vacuum universe where no one can test it or vary this or manipulate that. It's all nonsense you've been taught since your youth and you are not prepared to handle or process new information. New information should not be offensive. Nor should you attack me for providing it. Now let's continue to listen to this guy tell the truth that space-time is intangible. And so is gravity and quantum field theory. They're all theories, one theory after another. You introduce one theory, you end up and you wind up having a produce another theory to support the first theory and you have to generate another theory to support the second one that supports the first one it's a long vicious line of theories and millions of people are tired of it So irreducible representations of the symmetry of space-time, i.e. false and fictitious ways that they try to describe something that does not exist. Is that so hard to understand? Let's see if you can process this. 
Please allow me to introduce you to logic. <laughs> First of all, space-time is not a fabric. Space and time are not tangible things in the same way that water and air are. It is incorrect to think of them as a medium at all. Therefore, gravitational waves introduced to us by the liars at LIGO are debunked. What's this? Has space-time been proven? No. But despite all the things that space-time enables us to predict, it isn't real. And the same way that an atom is real, there's nothing you can do to detect space-time directly. Now, is it so hard to face reality? This is information on Google from Stanford University. They are admitting the truth because the truth can no longer be evaded. There is no such thing as a force, power, thing, or energy called gravity or anything else that is physically interacting with us holding or pulling or curving us back down to the center of the earth. The only real force, power, or energy that can be directly detected on the earth are electricity and magnetic field. And they clearly explain all life on earth. We ourselves are electric. If you have a heart attack, they can revive you with electricity. Electricity and magnetic field are both physical. We can directly detect, identify, isolate, study, examine, and harness current of electricity and magnetic field. Well, I'm out of time. You can't deny the truth, so let's face reality.